The next song is Build My Life. And what I like about this song is it's a good reminder that God is there for us even when it doesn't feel like it.
Happy Sabbath, church family. We hope you're all doing well during these rough times. Um, so the up next is a little song called Search My Heart. And just when I was singing this song, I just imagined I, I was on a mountain, like at the peak, and I was just praising God, screaming out my praises for God. And yeah, I really enjoyed singing it, and we hope you enjoy watching it. Bye-bye. church family. Our song is Do It Again by Elevation Worship. It's a reminder of God's never-ending love for us. We hope you enjoy it. Thank you. 
But you have never failed me yet Waiting for change to come Knowing the battle's won For you have never failed me Great is your faithfulness, faithfulness I'm still in your hands, this is my confidence You've never failed me yet I know the night won't last Your word will come to pass My heart will sing your praise again Jesus, you're still
are the Kamados. And we've been with Upper Room for six years. I'm Jerlyn, and I work at a New York Life Insurance Company in Glendale. Uh, I'm Kevin Kamado, and I'm the pastor of the quaint little church Upper Room Fellowship. Hi, my name is Elia, just from Anna Kamado, and I'm you, and I'm five years old. And this is Ethan, and he's turning one tomorrow. Woohoo! Um, we were married on uh, October 25, 2010. And we were married in my beautiful home back in Maui in McKenna. Um, we started our ministry at Upper Room in June of 2014, and we have been blessed to be a part of this uh, church family. Um, you know, our family has literally grown um, while we have been here, and we're just so happy to be the ministering couple here at Upper Room. One of my fondest memories is um, pretty much most people have said the same thing, and that's anything that involves food. Um, just us coming together, whether it's for New Year's, for Christmas, for potluck, um, anything with food that we can enjoy together. Staying with my friends and playing with them. Um, some of my happiest memories are um, just worshiping together. I really enjoy when we um, not only are singing, um, but uh, really fellowshipping and you know just worshiping God. So those are some of my fondest memories. Welcome to the family. Happy Sabbath. Join me um, as I pray and we lift up our, our prayer, our praises and praise to, to our God and Savior. Dear Lord, come to you in prayer this Sabbath morning. We thank you for your, your great goodness and love. Thank you for loving us with the love that can't completely comprehend that we thank you that you do love us and care for us so deeply and Lord we just want to lift up to you some prayer requests of course uh, what's going on in this world with the pandemic right now we want to pray for, for safety and health especially those in the front line um, like our doctors and nurses and anyone else who, who's coming to close contract, contact we ask that you would send your angels to, to protect them in a special way we also want to pray for others that are have uh, health issues of course such as Matthew and his recovery especially during this time I pray for Megan's friend's mom, Paula. She has cancer. Karen's cousin suffering from, from cancer. 
My uncle also suffered from cancer. We ask that you would um, lay your healing hands on them, that they would recover, and that they would um, that it would be a faith story for them. But Lord, we ask these things according to your will. We know that you have plans that are that are deeper and more far-reaching than we can understand. So most of all, we ask in all these situations that your will be done, that your will be done. You are too wise to err. You see the end from the beginning, and you are answering our prayers according to what is best for us in an eternal point of view. We ask that you're with uh, the companies and businesses as well as we um, we get back um, trying to have some semblance of normalcy as uh, we get back to uh, going back to work and, and things like that and you know we know that uh, economies have been hit hard especially those that are not not big businesses so we ask that you're with them in a special way that you're with our um, our country in a special way at this time and all those around the world um, we pray for uh, different things as well as, as um, you know, Gemma and Fred um, you know with their little daughter we, we thank you for them bringing uh, their daughter into this world. We ask for their safety. We ask for Jerlyn's mom also for safety. If she's one of those ones on the front line. I want to, I want to lift up to you my my coworker. Uh, she's pregnant, and we praise you that she's um, doing much better with the baby. We ask for your continued pr protection um, during this time. And I want to lift up to you my my own job situation. You know that it's. It's pretty wild what's going on, but Lord, I don't know what's going to happen. Um, I just ask for your will to be done, because again, you know what's best. You know what's best for me and my family, and you know what's best for each one of us. Lastly, I just want to pray for our, for our church. Um, as we are joining uh, each other in worship, with one another in worship, that you really come into our hearts and that you really motivate us, that you give us a desire, a deep desire to have a, a stronger, more intimate relationship with you and that the Holy Spirit will really resonate in our hearts, that he would dwell in our hearts and he will give us the guidance and wisdom that we need and day by day that we would truly strive, truly strive to be Christ-like, that we would Go forward uh, with all our might, with all our effort, joined with divine power. And please be with us as we as we worship you today. We ask that you would lift up our eyes into heavenly things and spiritual things. That we would learn to love you more and more. That we would understand you and your love for us. Can please send your angels to protect us and keep us and help us to have a, um, a wonderful time on this Sabbath. We pray all these things in Jesus' name. Amen. Good morning and happy Sabbath, church family. You know... We're all going through something right now, whether it's strained relationships, stresses of job security, fear of COVID, emotionally charged racial discussions, or in times like this, understanding our faith and what role it plays in these last days. What do we do if we do anything with these tests and trials will make a difference in the way we live our lives and the way we live our faith. Before we begin, let's go ahead and bow our heads forward to prayer. 
Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to thank you so much for this blessed opportunity. Lord, this is something that has been on my heart, and I just pray, Lord, that you will continue to reveal things, not only to myself, but everybody that is listening. Father God, I pray that you will guide my words, that in everything I say, Lord, that they will be guided by you. Thank you so much, Lord, for this Sabbath day, and thank you so much for who you are. We pray all these things, Lord, in your name. Amen. You know, we are well into the fourth month of COVID, and I mean the stay-at-home orders, um, the mandatory wearing of masks. And honestly, I am struggling like many of you. Um, for example, I'm trying to balance taking care of my kids while being a full-time pastor, and honestly, it's quite stressful. I may not show it outwardly, but just ask my wife, and she can tell you exactly what I am going through emotionally and what she has to put up with, with all of us just staying at home and my mental state here at stay at, um, at home. Actually, you might even want to ask my kids about how well daddy is taking care of them. I'll say this, they're alive, but I'm not so much sure how my five-year-old daughter, how much she's actually learning, and also my one-year-old, how much he's learning. I will have to admit that I've lost my temper one too many times. Um, trying to teach my daughter how to uh, read, how to write, how to do math and all that stuff, and even trying to teach my one-year-old son how to communicate his needs. And I'm not the most creative dad, I'll, I'll give you that. When it comes to si to playing simple games of make-believe, I am probably one of the worst out there. And playing games, the same game of tag or whatever it is, over and over and over again, I probably have said, you know what, I'm not gonna play this. I love my kids, but these stresses have tested my relationship with my family. In other places where I have been tested is trying to figure out how to navigate leading a church through a pandemic. Four months ago, if you were to ask me about streaming online service, I would have said that that was reserved for large mega churches or those, or those really tech savvy churches who invested in all of that equipment. We weren't taught this. I wasn't taught this in seminary. We were taught how to prepare programs. We were taught how to give a Bible study and listen and, and watch for face-to-face -face cues about when we're talking about God. We were taught how to run board meetings and organize prayer meetings and outreaches to the community. But now, 90% of our ministry is done online. Within a month of the stay-at-home orders, all of the equipment needed for vlogging and online worship were either sold out or doubled in price. And so pastors all around, you know, if I were to show you, you know, the pastors group that I'm a part of on Facebook, we were scrounging around everywhere we could just to get what we needed for this new online worship, this new demographic of church. And whether I've done it right, whether we've done it right, I don't know but only time will tell. Finally, one of the other places that I have truly been tested during this time has been with all of the talks of social justice, racism, and other prejudices, and especially how my faith plays a part in that. Before the recent social justice movement began, I was pretty comfortable simply watching these situations from the comfort of my own home, ignorant of the maladies many of my brothers and sisters were facing. Even in my own life, honestly, I have suffered very little to no form of prejudice that has affected me in such a way. But it wasn't until Jerlyn, my wife, and I sat down to watch a documentary that opened my eyes to the history of other Asian Americans before me paving a way for freedoms and privileges that I have today. This sparked within me a desire, a desire to know more and impressed upon me to start having conversations with the people about their life. Soon thereafter, the murder of George Floyd flooded the scene and the conversations of racism and prejudice were brought to the forefront. Um, at this point, conversations were essential for gaining more of a full picture of what is happening in our world and what has been hidden from our eyes for so long. These conversations brought out the reality of my black friends and the racism they experienced just simply by the color of their skin. We saw this from the conversation that I had with my, friend, my pastor friends Kelly, Jean Phillip, and uh, Pastor Denry White. 
these conversations just continue to, to grow. I was asking more questions and wanting people to tell me what's going on in their lives because rather than just seeing it from online, I wanted to hear it from their lips. These conversations started to grow and it brought about more, uh, more other things such as sexism and gender divides for women in the workplace, especially women in the church through women's ordination. We have women pastors who are working hard, if not sometimes harder than some of the men. And yet because of a word, they are being discriminated. These conversations also brought up more stories upon stories upon stories of friends, both on, on both sides of the racial issue discussion and other prejudices that I have never known before were brought to my eyes. Jerlyn and I were so impressed to educate ourselves on the matters, both socially and more importantly, spiritually. And in the face of these tests, face of the struggle uh, being here at home and trying to figure out how to deal with relationships and tensions, face with trying to figure out what church is all about and these racial tensions now, the question always is, what do I do if I do anything at all? And how does my faith play into all of this? Now, all of that was from a personal and pastoral perspective, but what about from a church perspective? Where do we as a church fit into all of this? Well, uh, how many of us were experiencing church, these tests and trials were now being set before us. Some of the members, some of the older members, and see, maybe some, even some of you were having a hard time transitioning on how to watch service online, how to give tithe, how to interact with the rest of your church family. We were no longer hugging and shaking hands to say happy Sabbath. We were no longer singing congregational hymns or praise music, but singing together on a screen at home with the same people day in and day out. One aspect of church that many of us have missed and are still missing is the relational aspect. God's church, we are community. We are a community of believers. But how do we form community when we are not physically together? Those are the questions that we're asking. And how are we as a church responding to the issues at hand? Should we be responding at all? And if so, what is the appropriate avenue to take on these matters? And again, how does our faith play a role in all of this? I like one of the quotes that Ellen G. Wright wrote in um, Christ Object Lessons, page 146. She says this, We need to have far less confidence in what man can do and far more confidence in what God can do for every believing soul. He longs to have you reach after him by faith. He longs to have you expect great things from Him. He longs to give you understanding in temporal as well as spiritual matters. And He has He can sharpen the intellect. He can give tact and skill. Put your talents into the work. Ask God for wisdom and it will be given to you. This is a powerful passage because basically what she is saying is... Our faith should not be resting in what we are able to do, but what in God, what God is able to do in and through us. And especially in the passages that we're reading, James, who is, we'll see later, the brother of Jesus, who didn't believe him in the beginning, right? This was one of the, this brother of Jesus did not believe his ministry in the beginning, but after his resurrection came full heartedly to understand that his brother was the Messiah. In this passage in the book of James, we see that our faith is to take action, not in what the confidence we have in ourselves, in our man, but in the confidence of God. And God will give us understanding, even in the temporal things, here, the things that we have here on this earth, the things that we're trying to understand. Like I was saying, I'm trying to understand how to be a pastor in this new church age of online worship. I'm trying to figure out how to be a better, more loving and patient father and husband at home and trying to figure out out how to navigate all these um, uh, these stresses and tests um, here at home and God is willing to sharpen your intellect he can give tact put your talent put your faith into action into the work of God and God will give wisdom so let's look at our passage for today
James chapter 1, and we're going to start off first in verses 1 through 5. James chapter 1, starting in verses 1 through 5. The Word of God says this, James, a servant of God and of the Lord Jesus Christ, to the twelve tribes in dispersion, greetings. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And let steadfastness have its full effect that you may be perfect and complete, lacking nothing. And if you lacks, and if any of you lacks wisdom, let him ask God, who gives generously to all without reproach, and it will be given to him. This is a powerful passage because if we're looking at the time of James, this is the time after Jesus had resurrected. And so James, the brother of Jesus, was leader of the church. And so they were going through similar situations as we can, as we can see here. Not necessarily the stay-at-home orders and COVID, but there were a lot of things that were happening where their faith was tested, where, they, where what they were believing was tested. And so he's saying here in verse 2, Count it all joy, nothing but joy, supreme joy, that when you are tested, that you will be able to stand steadfast. You will be able to weather through it. He says here that you will meet certain trials. He's speaking to all different kinds of trials, <laughs> whether it is dis uh, discrimination, whether it is um, money problems, whether it is physical health problems, whether it is relationships. He says you will go through these different trials, but if you put your faith in God, God will be able to give you a perspective, a perspective that changes everything. And we're going to get into it a little bit later. But what God is wanting is for internal control. What do we mean by that? Internal control. When you have Christ and the Holy Spirit working in you, you are able to ask for wisdom, something that God is willing to give. As it says here in verse 5, He is willing to give it to you generously without reproach. He says that let these trials go through because once you are steadfast, let it take full effect that you may be perfect you may be complete, lacking nothing. How many of us want to lack nothing? How many of us want to be ready for any and all situations? How many of us want to have a perspective on life that is truly different from what the world gives? The world wants to make you stressed. Trust me, I am I'm example. I'm an example of that. I shared it with you. I am stressful. I, I lose my temper. I am emotional. And my families are the ones that are, are, are receiving the blunt of that. And I, I have to pray more. I have to ask God, Lord, change my perspective so that when my internal is changed, my external actions of faith will come out as a more loving and patient husband. I can be more complete, lacking nothing. Right? He continues to say that there's an endurance that is different from all other endurances. You know, he says there's a, grow, there's a growing determination in the face of adversity, and it is based, and here's the word, it is based in hope. When we are struggling through these trials, we have to understand that God is a God of answers. God is a God of hope. So when we are able to have a faith in God and his power to change our hearts, power to change our minds, then we have hope knowing that he will answer them accordingly. And when we have that hope, we start to mature in our faith. We start to mature and become more complete when we are able to endure when we are able to have a perspective of godliness and a persistence of patience, when we're able to have hope in what God is doing in us, we will be able to have a perspective of life and an outlook of life and an action of faith that resembles that newly found perspective in life. And that's where the wisdom of God comes. Our faith Here's an illustration. Our faith is not only tested, but it is tested to the point to being proven genuine. 
and that faith that moves into action, we can live with a hopeful attitude in the midst of these trials. In ancient times, this form of refining gold involved a person, a craftsman, sitting next to a hot fire with molten gold in a pot, being stirred and skimmed to remove all the impurities off the top. These flames would reach up to an excess of a thousand degrees Celsius. And this job was really dangerous, but for them to get the purest gold, they had to have one of the hottest fires. The second method of refining gold involves using chemicals. Really strong acids were used to dissolve the impurities within the gold. And afterwards, they were able to get up to 99.999% purity or 24 karat gold. The process of refining gold is what God is doing for us. We may go through the fires and just keep in mind, brothers and sisters, God is not the one placing the fires upon you. The fires are those of sin and the, th the sinfulness around this world. We go through them so that when we come out, we will be more pure. We will be able to take off all that excess that may have been in our lives, weighing us down, making us impure, so that we can come out more pure and more complete and more mature, just as the verse said, on the other side. Count it joy that we go through these trials to understand them. Now, in the rest of the passage, James shifts now in verse 19 all the way to verse 27. He shifts now and starts talking about certain things. He says in verse 19, may we be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to wrath or slow to anger. And James is shifting instructions to the difficulties in faith, the difficulties that are happening right now. He is addressing the issues of poverty. He is addressing the need for us to take action for Jesus. And this is the reason why believers should take care of what it means to say that let every man be swift to hear. We are in a time where, you know, I was sharing that one of the, tr the trials and the tests that I'm going through is this social justice issue. And so many people are not willing to hear. We're willing to just share our ideas. We're willing to just share our thoughts. We're willing to just say, this is my opinion, and I don't want to listen to you at all. But that's not what Jesus did. That's not what God is calling us to do. That's what James is realizing. Instead of just preaching and just letting people know, he's saying, I want to have a conversation to you. I want to have a conversation with you. And sometimes we're like that with God. We want to just tell God, God, this is what I want. This is what I need. This is what I need for you to do. And God is saying, wait, 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 hold on. I want you to listen. Listen to my word and see what I have for your life. Slow to slow. speak, they're allowing the conversation and the stories to come out, and they're slow to anger. This means that if they are quick to anger, if they are quick to judge, then that hinders the hearing of God's word being placed into the person's life, being shared how God's word is being moved into the life of others. Now, James makes that shift and says, all right, I not only want you to count it joy that you go through these trials, but we have to understand that these trials come about because we talk so fast. We don't want to listen and we get easily angered. So I want you to be slow to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger so that you will be able to be a people of community willing to listen to the conversations, willing to listen to the stories of people who are going through trials and tribulations just like you. And when you do, then your faith can move into action. This is what we see in James chapter 1, verse 22 to 27. He says this, but be doers of the word and not only hearers, deceiving yourselves. For if anyone is a hearer of the word and not a doer, he is like a man who looks intently at his natural face in a mirror. For he looks at himself and goes away and at once forgets what he was like. But the one who looks into the perfect law, the law of liberty, and perseveres, being no hearer who forgets, but a doer who acts, he will be blessed in his doing. For if anyone thinks he is religious and does not bridle his tongue, but receives his deceives, but deceives his heart, this person's religion is, in its powerful word, it says worthless. 
And this is what James says, religion that is pure and undefiled before God and the Father is this, visit the orphans and widows in their affliction and keep oneself unstained from the world. This is all about faith, your faith in that when you are able to listen, when you are able to have an inward control of your emotions, an inward control of what you are portraying to others, an inward control of your tongue, an inward control of your anger, allowing the love of God to flow through you to others, then your faith can start moving in an outward action of love to the other person. So what part does my faith play in the world we live in today? With the new norms such as COVID, the stay-at-home orders, the mandatory mask wearing, social injustice is being talked about but so highly sensitive and polarizing, these are what we are being tested with today. James chapter 1 shows us that a true response to God's word involves both an outward action, and here's what I was talking about, and an inward control. And this can only be achieved if we are faithful in studying God's word and acting out the will of God to humanity. For example, in the case of me and my children, I need to make more time in prayer and studying of God's word to remind myself of what the Bible says. The fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, gentleness, and self-control. These all sound like answers to what I am currently being tested in, trying to balance everything all at the same time. But the Bible had an answer for it. In the case of we as a church, we must remember that the church is not a building, but it is the people and we are accountable to each other and to our community. And finally, in the case of social injustice, James is speaking directly to this. He says in verse 27, visit the orphan and the widow in their affliction. During the time after Jesus' resurrection, slavery was still around. Women were lowly regarded. Children were practically seen as nothing and elderly people were left to fend for themselves if not taken care of by their own children, and not to mention the discrimination, the discrimination of Jews to Gentiles, the discrimination of Jews to Samaritans, discrimination of Romans to Jews, the Pharisees and the scribes to the disenfranchised. So to think that the time of Jesus was different from ours is to say that these things weren't happening, and they were the followers of Jesus, and they were called put, to put their faith into action, and these things definitely were happening. James, the brother of Jesus, is challenging all believers to have an inward control and an outward action. That through the study of God's word, by the guidance of the Holy Spirit, in the midst of trials, we may be joyful. That this joy will permeate my every fiber and I will be able to act in faith the way Christ has called me to, to my family. May we be a church who is accountable to each other by stepping outside of ourselves and reaching out to each other in ways we never thought. Give someone from church, a friend or a family member a call and see how they're doing. We've come so so into ourselves. We are here at home. What is in it for me? You know, I can't wait till this so that I can do this. Well, what about our brothers and sisters? What about the elderly at our church that uh, are not able to go out? Even when we start having uh, church again, they're gonna probably be one of the last people to be able to come back to church. What about them? What about those that have had difficult times? I know um, some of our brothers and sisters have not even been home for the past three months because they're out somewhere else. Call those people up. We are accountable to them. This is our action of faith, knowing from the inward control of hope and joy created by God's word in us, these outward actions will naturally flow out. May we be accountable to our community in that although we are mainly stay at home, that the people and the businesses around us know that we are supporting them, that we are praying for them. Maybe we can start up a conversation with someone outside of our sphere of influence and share with them our love and passion for God who has love and passion for them. 
may we be a community of believers whose faith acts for justice and mercy, and most importantly, spreading the kingdom of God to all of God's children. When we are tested, may our faith move us in to action. Let's pray. Gracious Heavenly Father, I want to pray that you will help us have a different perspective, that when these trials come, Lord, we can count it joy because we have hope in you, that you are able to be faithful and change us and give us a perspective that is otherworldly, Father God. May we be swift to hear, slow to speak, and slow to anger, Father God, so that we can have these conversations that are so integral and important to people that are in need, praying that people will do the same for us. And finally, Father God, may we be a people of action. May our faith move us into ways of loving, of listening, of sharing, of proclaiming, of, of, of supporting. Father God, stepping out in justice and mercy, fighting for those who need it. May we move out in action. May our faith be one of action. Thank you so much, Father, for giving us that hope, that faith that is able to move mountains. We pray all these things, God, in your name. Amen. Happy Sabbath, church family. I pray that the Lord will bless you this week, that if you are tested, you will be able to have faith and hope and move forward in faith, knowing that God will bless you. God bless.